This week, something refreshing, something that I haven't driven for a long time. Volkswagen's Arteon. There's two models, the Elegance and the R-Line. This one has 140 kilowatts, the R-Line has 206. They both go through a seven-speed DSG, so double clutch gearbox, and they both have four-cylinder engines. It's a turbocharged engine, of course, and this one drives just the front wheels and the R-Line drives all the wheels. The front emblem houses not only the radar for the radar cruise control, but a front camera as well. There's also other sensors throughout, and just here you can see a light bar. Now that only comes on when the headlights are on, and it extends along here. These daytime running lights are on all the time. Indicators are just above up here. These beautiful headlights are matrix headlights. And the reason I bang on about matrix headlights all the time is how beautifully efficient they are, leaving just the oncomers in a pool of dimmed light. It's not just up or down like normal headlights. It's got automatic locking and unlocking on all four doors by using these little things. So with the key in your pocket, it will lock and unlock the doors. All you have to do is either use the VW thing and you twist that out or give it a kick. So long as you've got the key in your pocket, the hatch will open up. There's an absolute mountain of room. The seats go down 60-40. There are bag hooks either side. There are little clever storage solutions, including cargo nets. And underneath the floor, have a look at this. Hoorah, a full-size spare. And at night, the backlights give this beautiful little dance. And the other thing are these rather gorgeous wheels. 19 inch on this model, but the shape of them, they're just beautiful. There's these sort of turbine-y looking ones on the top model that are 20 inch. But just have a look at this beautiful bit of sculpting along the bottom of the doors. And you can tell that this is the entry level elegance model because of the entry level elegance badge. And that means this car starts at about $60,000. Just keep your head down under that low, low sill at the top. For starters, the window is tinted and you get this beautiful purpley sort of blue effect on the doors along with the Harman Kardon speakers. But look how much space there is for my knees. Now this is set for me to drive. Have a look at this. That's, you know, six inches at least. There's a nice wide armrest with a couple of cup holders and on the back of the armrest some centre vents, heated outboard seats and when the car's going there's another section of climate control that shows up in here and it's a slide control. And under the flap, a USB outlet plus a 12 volt outlet. The one thing that amazes me about cars is no matter how expensive, no matter how much you pay, unless it's a Rolls Royce, they seem to cheap out on the carpet. Now remember what I said, this is basically a cut price Audi, but the interior doesn't feel any less posh. Turn that down, that's the radio control, so that's a press or slide. All of the controls are kind of pushy, touchy things. Over here is a place to adjust your heads up display and your light controls, including the driving lights and the configurable center dash. You can go through several different views on this. Above that, don't know if you can see it, but there's this little pop-up piece of glass with the head up display on it. Down below, we've got the in-between system. So it hasn't quite yet gone to that new system that's in the Golf Mark 8. It's got separate controls below for the climate control system. When you go into the menu system, you'll see that you can go to CarPlay. This has wireless CarPlay, as you can see. My phone is not tied in in any way. It's got a route to home. And it can stream your favourite things like uh, tune in and so forth. The other thing I like about the Arteon interior is the delicious use of metals, the discreet vents, and the fact that everything is so nice and soft, even the tops of the doors. And like all Volkswagens, well, most Volkswagens, the ones that don't have the little tiny, short, stumpy gear levers, this one you pull right back to go into drive, another one to go back into sport mode. And while we're at it, 
there's sports modes that you can select, including an individual one. Press change and you can then specify what you want the engine to do, the steering, the uh, cruise control, and the active suspension as well. And as I said outside, this dual pane glass and the fancy front windscreen make this so quiet. I've seen a spot up here, so let's use the automated parking. I'm going to give that a go, indicate, and when it's found a spot, it'll tell me. Okay, it says it's found a spot, and it already knows that it's a parallel parking spot. Alrighty, I'm going to let it go, no hands. I mean, this is a massive spot, so I mean, yes, of course, it's going to be able to get itself in easily. But I'm controlling the steering sorry the brakes and it's controlling the steering it makes me nervous because these are very expensive wheels to okay that's something to drive forward now it says that the parking's finished but here's another cool feature so I'm going to indicate I've selected reverse. Now this is a really big spot, so this probably won't work. So it's telling me to go back, right, and it's steering to get me out. Now it's also telling me to take the steering over. So it got me into that spot and out of it. I like that. It'll also do the 90 degree spot, so ones at shopping centers and so forth. Now I've got this in comfort and over these tram lines, you hardly feel a thing. When I was doing my little mountain run the other day, I popped it into sport mode and it was absolutely brilliant. The brakes are incredibly precise. Incredibly precise. I mean, they don't grab, but you definitely feel them pull you up. And I had a, an emergency stop the other day. It was just sensational. Now this is just in normal mode and just then I stuck the boot in because we're going onto the freeway and I could feel the front wheels scrambling for grip and the traction control going bananas. So it would be a mistake to think that 140 kilowatts is not enough. It is plenty. I'm going to activate. Now it's telling me my travel assist is activated. What that's turned on is the smart cruise control, the smart lane control, all of the smart controls. It's keeping me within the lines. All I'm doing is just lightly touching. Now, the other interesting thing is in my heads up display, I get uh, instructions from the cruise control and from the navigation. So I never ever have the navigation audio on. This also has side assist, so it will try and avoid an accident if you change lanes into someone's path. And that's whether or not you've seen it in the blind spot monitor or not. But it does everything the more expensive models do. It does everything an Audi does for less money. Looks as smart. And this purple light, you can change to a lot of other colours if that one doesn't particularly suit you. I think there's 30 or something all up. One thing I'd like to say about the Harman Kardon audio is it is sensational. There are a couple of other clever things this car has which when it was released were innovative for the time. For example, if you have an accident it will apply the brakes so that you don't have another accident if you're rendered unconscious. Also, with the driver monitoring that it does, if it thinks you're unconscious, it'll stop the car. I don't think it'll pull over and park in a parking bay, but it'll certainly stop you from running into something further up the road. I think I'd prefer Volkswagen's rather excellent eight- What would you like to do? Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? You can say, navigate to- Yes, by... cancel. Cancel. It's got this system that listens out for you. And if you say, hey, Volkswagen. What can I do for you? It brings up the assistant. So like, hey, Google or hey, Siri, cancel. 
But I found that using it was far more trouble. No, no, I, I don't want you to search for government nearby. I found that it was a bit buggy. Unlike Google that we used in the uh, Polestar a few weeks ago, this doesn't have the advantage of the hive mind. God, that engine is so silky. And that's what I like about VW engines, and Audi engines for that matter. In fact, all of the VW group, including Skoda, oh, that is just fabulous. Little puddle of water, no problem. Now I'll leave it in sport to come back onto the freeway to see what, if any, difference it makes to my acceleration, which I thought was pretty good anyway. All right, let's just wait for the cars. It's the trouble with doing late afternoon reviews. The front wheels, if anything, are this car's Achilles heel because it's putting 140 kilowatts through the front wheels. You may think that's not very much, but it's enough to get them really scampering. Now you can see at night this looks rather lovely. Everything is backlit, it's easy to see, and it's easy to use. Over the years I've said that some of the trouble that I have with cars is simply this, that they're not really long-legged, they're not really good for highway stuff, or they're good for highway stuff, but they're lousy around town. This is great at everything. They've thought of everything, and perhaps that's why this car is just so beautifully quiet. As always, hit like, leave a comment, and just over there to subscribe.